Hi, this is Billy from Earthy Garden. Today I want to show you my uh, new Romy composting system. I started Romy composting about uh, six months ago. I bought some European Nightcrawler and Red Wiggler, um, and I was using the plastic tote, uh, 18 gallon. I wanted to check out the Romy compost in the tote, and I found that the harvesting casting is very tedious. I have to dump out the entire tray and take off the, the capping. And also the material was uh, very wet because it uh, didn't hold the moisture very well. Um, so I started looking up on uh, bin design and I found um, a video from Paul at Warm Farming Review. Um, he made the bins uh, out of 2x4 and hardware cloth that was simple and um, his design resembled the um, Warm Factory system. You can check out his video at the link I'll post below. Let's take a look at the overall design and feature of this compost bin system. I'll go into the detail of how to make um, each of the components here. The interior size of the trays is uh, 22 by 21. The top is uh, 24 by 24 with a handle. So each tray is made out of one 2 by 4 and there's a handle on two sides. Um, the hardware cloth is a half inch mesh. So the trays are self aligned on the left and right due to the handle protruding on the top. Each tray is about $6 in cost. Let's take a look at the bottom. The hardware cloth at the bottom is fastened to the tray using narrow crown stapler at um, the corner of the grids. You can use screw and a washer to fasten it together. I happen to have the narrow crown stapler, so it was convenient and quick to do. It holds the material pretty well. The base is made similar to the tray, um, the same dimension here. And you need also a half a, a 2x4 to make the legs, which is 12 inch height. For the bottom, I use a top light material. You can use plywood. But this is a rise back cover that is a, like a top light material. It's pretty heavy duty to collect the lychee and in the middle here I have a drainage hole. To collect the lychee you don't need much, you just need a can and put it in the center of the drainage hole. Like so. So the lychee is going to come down here. It should concentrate in the middle and then go down the drainage hole. So how this flow tubing works is that you start with the bottom tray and then you fill in warm bedding and warm food until it's full, like this top tray here. Then you put on another tray, and then you do the same thing for as many trays as you have. Eventually, you don't put any more food on the bottom tray, so that the warm finish processing or that food, they'll migrate up to a new food source. And then you wait for a while for all the eggs to hatch, and the new worms to migrate as well. Then you just take out the bottom tray and use the vermicompost compost, and then you put that bottom tray on the top. Um, I like the modular design because it's more manageable to process compost um, in each tray. It also have more ventilation and more surface area per tray for the worm. So once you fill up that tray, you just get another empty tray and set it on top. And you can see the mesh will slowly touch the bottom. Uh, also, if you put more material, it will weigh down the mesh that will make contact with the bottom. The worm shouldn't have any issue falling up to the top tray and you would just put the new food on the top tray only and then you put some new bedding material on the top so this will be my top tray just to keep the moisture from the bottom tray and get it uh, ready for the next tray so with that uh, let's take a look at the design and, and how I do all the pieces so here's the dimension of the tray the uh, outside measurement is 24 by 25 and the inside measurement is uh, 22 by 21 and there's a ladybug uh, checking out my design as well um, so, um, the front and the back is uh, 24 inches and the two side is 22 inches the hardware cloth 1 fourth mesh 24 by 24 I found a discount on a half inch mesh, um, so I bought that and I'm, I'm, I'm using that. Most of the design that I found, they recommend one four inch. 
but I found that the one four inch mesh is a lot thinner than this one. So for the wood cut, you're gonna make four cuts. You need two 24 inches and two uh, 22 inches for the side. So the total is um, 92 inches um, for the tray. And you got about four inch off cut left over that you can use to make the make the handle here. For the lid, you can just you know, keep it simple, 24 by 24 plywood. You can use tarp or plastic sheetings. Yeah, so that's the layout. Um, let's go into the process of making it. Uh, basically, it's very simple. You just make four cut on the two by four and another cut for the mesh, and then fasten the the hardware cloth to the tray, and you're done. From a two by four start, you cut it into four pieces. So these two are twenty two inch, and this is two twenty four inch, and you're gonna left with about four inch cut off which then you cut it into two and these will be used for the handle um, cutting the two by four i use a minor saw but you can use a circular saw or a jigsaw or even a hand saw and then let's assemble it so now to assemble the frame it's pretty basic these two sides the short side 22 inch and the front and the back 24 inch and you just butt join the short side to the front and the back to join it together, you just um, pre-drill two holes and then drive a, a two and a half inch screw to the two pieces. It would be good to add uh, wood glue in between the joints. It should last a lot longer. Um, yeah, and all the sides are the same. Just wet join them together. So now we have the frame which need to cut the hardware cloth inside and then uh, fasten it to the frame. So this is the bottom of the tray. Um, gonna just lay out the hardware cloth. It's a uh, 24 inch wide, so you just need to do one cut to match this piece here. It should be around 24 inches. You have gloves, put it on, just in case, so you won't scratch yourself from the hardware cloth. Okay, so now I have my piece cut to size. Now I just need to table them down. To fasten the hardware cloth to the tray, I use a narrow crown stapler, one inch now, so it penetrates pretty deep. So if you don't have a crown stapler, you can use a screw and a washer. And what the washer does is, when you screw the screw into the wood, the washer will do the holding of the mesh together um, so that it won't fall off. Um, you can do about four pieces in each side. Um, but since I have a stapler, I will use that because it's more convenient. You can use the grid of the hardware cloth as a guide to make sure that the mesh is, the mesh is uh, straight. And then um, I like to aim it at the corner of the square. So that way it holds both sides together. Um, so now we put on the handle. Uh, for the handle, <coughs> on the long side, the one with the two um, small side connectors, just find the center of 25 inch, which is 12 and a half. It doesn't have to be super accurate because uh, we just need to put the handle here. And we use the two pieces that you cut off and attach it like this. You want to leave a little lip here so that the next tray that you put on will align with the bottom tray uh, as far as left and right is concerned. And also you want the rounded corner on the bottom because that's where your hand is going to be so you don't want a sharp edge there and basically I just clamp it and then screw um, two screws on each side and that's it
and give it a dump. So for a second try, when we put it on, to the left and the right doesn't move much because of the other handle that is blocking the movement on the lateral side. Yep, that's uh, completely worked out as the portrait. So once you finish making the trays, you can use it with just the trays and a lid. And you put some bricks underneath to raise the bin up a little bit. Since I'm doing this, I feel like I want to make a base as well, just so that it's a complete unit. The way I make it is just make another frame similar to the tray and attach a piece of plastic or sheeting or some top material or plywood and attach four legs to the frame for the base. So you need a half, a two by four, and just cut it up into 12 inches uh, in length and um, screw it into the base like this. Uh, that should be sufficient. This is the, the bottom of the tray and uh, these are the legs that touch the ground. And you need something to cover this um, and a hole in the middle to collect the lid this. So what I have on hand is a rice bag. Um, it's kind of like uh, top material, pretty heavy duty. I cut a hole in the middle and um, I have these uh, glue-in compression adapter uh, from my irrigation um, and it fits uh, into a half inch coupling. So basically I push one through and um, this one I just push it together like this. So this way it directs the leche out in this hole instead of running down the tarp in case if your bin is a little bit lopsided. So the top will be at the bottom of the tray and the hole in the middle uh, for drainage. And now um, I just need to fasten the, the top to the tray like this before attaching the legs. So that way the, the leg screw will also hold the top together um, and the leg will go down. So once you fasten the, um, the base, you flip it upside down so you can screw in the legs like this. So here's the completed base. And the top. And the leche goes here. Then push down, drain to the middle and you collect the leche at the bottom of this hole. So this is the final product. You have a base with about 8 inch clearance and 4 trays and a lid. This is a complete unit and the cost is pretty reasonable too. So each tray, you need one stud, that's about $3. The hardware cloth, 2 feet by 2 feet, it runs about $2. About a 25 feet for about $25 and uh, you know hardware maybe another dollar so you look at about six dollar per tray the bottom is one and a half two by four and the top is just a two by two two feet by two feet plywood the entire unit is pretty reasonably priced um, you just need to put in some work and to build it so that's the entire process how I build my flow through um, vermicompost compost bin and as you can see, it's pretty sturdy. I'm sitting on it, and uh, it's not moving anywhere. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video, and able to make use of some of the ideas here to build your own compost bin. And until next time, uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye.